Hi everyone, welcome back to the Model Railroad Back Shop. I'm your host Roger Kajawa. We are on location at one of the Freemo modules I'm doing for Tom at the McLean Depot. Uh, Tom sponsors a Freemo meet in McLean, Illinois twice a year. You might want to check it out. It uh, fills up a whole basketball floor in a uh, stadium, so it's pretty cool. One of the uh, things I wanted to do on the module was do some farm fields, which I did in a previous video. And I got some cows and some deer, and I thought I'd put up a fence. So I'm going to show you my technique for putting up a farm fence. It's going to go over here in the pasture to keep those cows where they're supposed to be. The farmer might want to put a fence around this plot because the deer are kind of getting in there and eating his crop. So let me uh, get set up here and we'll show you how I'm going to go about putting this fence in over here on the pasture. So I'll show you the tools we're going to use to put the fence in. The first thing I have are these toothpicks I got at Walmart. They come in a little shaker thing like this. You can flip it over and shake out how many however many you need. And then I have some just brown thread I found. Have some tweezers, some super glue, and a scale rule so I can space out my posts and keep them in a straight line. I also have a Dremel dual to drill into the wood to make the holes make it easier than doing it by hand. And I have some tight bond glue. Uh, it shouldn't make any difference what kind of glue you could use. You could probably still use a super glue too, but I'm going to use this to glue the toothpicks into the wood. I think it'll work pretty good. So let's get started and lay out our first one. Oh, there are one other thing. I made this little template. Uh, this is about four foot high. So I can judge how high I'm going to put my posts, so I don't have to measure each one. I can just set this down, push the post into that height, and they'll all be uniform. So let's get started. So I got my corner post in, and I'm going to line up a line here, kind of parallel to the creek, measure off 10 feet. find that hole while I can still see it and set that in there and I'm going to get a little glue once you're drilling into the scenery and you take your eyes off of it it's real easy to lose the hole so I'm using that one as a marker I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this Run that down, check the height. What's nice about the wood glue, it gives you a little bit of time. If you use super glue, it might dry too quick. So you're going to see that this can go pretty quick. I'm not sure how soon the, or how quick the stringing the wire is going to go, but putting the post in should go pretty quick. I had this same problem planting trees and I started using markers because once you drill in, especially if you're drilling into a massive amount of stuff like this, you can lose that hole pretty quick. Now I'll probably let these set up overnight, let that glue dry before I string the wires. 
And I'm also going to paint those so they're not this raw wood color. I thought about staining them at a time, but I thought about it, and it's probably going to be just as easy to stain them right here as after they're in. See, I lost that hole already. To make this more visually appealing, instead of running this all the way straight across here, I'm going to bring it across and then I'm going to angle it back. So I'll show you that after I get it in. I think it'll help follow the tracks a little bit more, kind of segmented and it'll break up that real long straight line. There you can kind of see how I'm angling that, putting that in segments along there. Uh, I think it'll be uh, more visually appealing. And when I get down here to the end, I'll back the camera off and show you what I'm gonna do. Um, probably gonna look around for a, maybe a farm gate too to put in here. So we'll see how that goes. I have the fence completed. It's in segments, kind of like the railroad owns this piece in here to get to their signal bridge. And I've got a fence here, ends here with a gate. And what this is, I just happen to find this painted orange in my scrap box. This is a plastistruct railing. You get two in here. I use this a lot on buildings for safety railings. But I just cut off two segments and I'm going to stick it in here and I think I'll take a little, maybe a screwdriver, take out some of this stuff like, like the uh, farmer pulls in here, maybe put in a little dirt in here where, uh, you know, it would get a lot more wear and tear from either a truck going in or the cows running up here when they hear the farmer's truck coming. So I'll get that wired up after I paint the uh, all the posts. Well, we're ready to string our fence. I have the thread tied off to a push pin, which I'm going to stick down below the layout just to hold some tension on a, the uh, string. Have our super glue we're going to use to glue the string to the posts our thread and some tweezers. The push pin will kind of hold this taut as we get started. And it's just a matter of taking your thread and looping it around. And then you can, as you get around here, you can start adjusting the height on them. I'm going to put three strings of wire on these. Now, once you, once you know about fencing, you will notice that the string is on the inside. And the reason they do that is when they clip these in real life, they would be clipped to the post. When the cow or whatever animal would come up against it, it's going to be pushing against the wire which would be on the post. If it was out here, it's possible they could push the wire out of the clips. So this way, it pushes against the post. 
it's not a big deal. Most people probably wouldn't even notice it. But once you know, it's just one of those little details that you want to go ahead and do it the right way. Once you're satisfied with how the wires look, you don't have to be perfect because they're going to sag in real life as the animals push on them and the posts move, you know, with weather and stuff like that. Just take the tiniest little drop of super glue and I put it on each post where the wires meet. This actually went pretty quick. I didn't show you the whole thing, but uh, it took about 25 minutes to string the wire, get it the way I wanted it. Well, I got my farm fence in. I added some cross bracing at the corners. That keeps the like this post here, keeps that post from leaning this way or that way when they put the wire on it. Just kind of one of those little details that once you notice it in real life, then you notice it on the model. The glue's drying a little bit so those spots will go away, but I really like it. It came out nice. I think they'll enjoy it at the Fremo meet. Again, if you guys get a chance, uh, there's a Fremo meet in quite a few places. The one I attend is in McLean, Illinois. It's sponsored by the McLean Depot Hobby Shop. It's about 20 miles south of Bloomington, about halfway down the state. So if you get a chance, check out the Fremos. And you get a chance, check out my other videos on Model Railroad Back Shop. Check out my uh, railroad, Atlantic Great Western. It's on YouTube and Facebook also. And thanks for watching my videos.